So what to expect when you implement the service design? A lot of interaction with the people, a lot of creative sessions, a lot of interesting orchestrations of the people, tools, uh, teams, processes, roles, vendors, customers, customers from one side, customers from another side, tangible, a lot of work with the post-its, and holistic, you will have an amazing view on the, on the whole company, how the company is working. Welcome, everyone. Um, we are um, we are online finally, right? So um, that is uh, kind of uh, the um, the name that uh, we came up a while ago uh, together with Nora when we started the, the whole uh, the meetup in I think it was February, March, shortly before uh, the, the the first lockdown. Um, when you thought. It's uh, we we need a place for the remote work community in Vienna to uh, to meet physically. Uh, well, then the lockdown came and we didn't have a chance to. But uh, we, uh, um, yeah, as uh, the rest of the world, we moved online and we really enjoyed it for the last couple of months. And uh, I'm particularly looking forward to the session today um, because I'm hearing it so often that in that online world that has been uh, that, that that's uh, sort of. It became so um, important during the last couple of months. Um, I, I, I'm still hearing that like early stage innovation is kind of difficult to do and larger events are kind of difficult to do. And I'm really looking forward to learn um, about um, service design jams today. And um, yeah, that's it uh, basically uh, from my side. I would like to uh, hand over to uh, Nora to guide you through to guide us through the rest of the evening and uh, specifically Nikita for uh, your um, experiences on uh, service design jams online. Hello, also from my side again. Um, thank you all so much for joining. Um, I'm also very excited uh, for the session today um, and to learn more about running remote service design jams uh, from Nikita. Um, Quickly, um, I know Nikita from my work at Define Crowd. Um, that's where we met uh, and where he's been pushing the value of service design. And um, yeah, also this is something that we would like to share with you today, not necessarily the experience that Nikita, Nikita has had running service design jams at Define Crowd, but also in his previous experience. And uh, yeah, Nikita, um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What should yes. you about you? In your sure. Career? But first of all, I want to thank Nora and Kael for inviting me. It was absolutely unexpected. I was not thinking of conducting any kind of meetup before the end of the year. But I had the whole materials ready and I said, yeah, why not? So it's, it's, I hope that it will be something useful for you. Um, I'm a product manager and service designer. I came from Ukraine. I'm living uh, now in Lisbon for five years and I'm really enjoying this country and the people and the weather and the food and the wine so i really encourage you if you are considering to moving within the europe to some really nice place lisbon is the right place for you to to consider um, in in portugal i was working in different companies small and big ones and uh, everywhere i was trying to introduce the service design and um, the presentation will be actually not only showing how you can implement the service jam remotely but also like how you can approach different size and different maturity organization uh, and start telling them about the service design or deploying the full speed again based on, on maturity. And we wanted to have this session very interactive that we can actually uh, answer your question and help you because you came here with some interest as so you have immediate interest. And this is something that we want to address. So I'm passing back to Nora who will drive us through the start of the session. Uh, so at the beginning um, of the session, we really wanted to understand what your background in service design and running service design jams is. Uh, we want to make the session as useful for you as possible. And we know that I mean, people come from all different backgrounds. I know some of you, some of you I don't know yet. Um, maybe Michael knows some of you. So um, we first just would like to get an idea of in how, how far you are already familiar with service design, with service design jams with running remote service design jams, 
And that's why we just prepared for you a little Mentimeter, um, which Michael can share. Uh, so we just can kind of get a little bit of an idea in like, what type of organization you work and if you've also ever participated in the service design jam. And afterwards, we will also do a little uh, breakout session, a set we kind of would like to involve you and also for Nikita to give him some guidance um, to kind of see where everyone's coming from. And yeah, um, that's what we're going to do afterwards. For now, um, I'd like to ask you to go to menti.com um, and you just use the code 9010811 and just tell us in what type of organization you work. Is it a startup, medium-sized organization, large organization, public sector? Claudia just said all of them. I'm not sure if that's what well, was possible to select on Minty.com. <laughs> yeah. Are you okay with that, Nora? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, quite a good mix, mix actually, right? Should we go to the next question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So yeah, and the next question, yeah, have you participated in the service design jam before? Offline, online? Okay, awesome. Okay, so I think Nikita, that also gives you a little bit of an indication um, of the experience that people have with service design jams. Um, now we would like to go into the breakout sessions. Um, so Michael is going to send you in groups of like three, four people. I think as we are a small group, I think we can make the groups all kind of small, like three, four people. And um, I'm also going to share, so also on Mural, you're going to see um, the question, do you have a specific interest in applying service design, service design jams in your organization? If yes, what's stopping you? So we just would like to find out, like, first of all, what is your interest in joining the session? Is it that you um, work that you want to implement service design jams in your organization? Um, do you have a, maybe a service design in your organization? It's just that we can get a little bit more of an idea of where you stand um, and how uh, also, Nikita can help you best with this presentation. Okay. Let's copy so, the link of the moral board again, or if anyone joins a little bit later, so you have it. So for that session, we should uh, all go to the moral board, Nora, is that correct? Exactly. For the exactly. session, okay. So I just copied the link again uh, in the chat. Thank you. And we're going to just divide you in breakout rooms um, and you will see it says on the more board, breakout room one, breakout room two and so on. And just depending on that, you can um, just discuss a little bit uh, for five to 10 minutes how, um, yeah, what's your experience, what your experience is and just summarize it a little bit um, on the more board. So yeah, what is your interest in applying service design jams in your organization? What are the issues that you might face? And I said, if you don't have experience with doing service design jams yet, or if you don't know what it is, then also just like in applying service design. 
from number one. Um, I'm a freelancer, cannot go, go beyond our team. I work in a large organization. It can be tough to collaborate end to end to understand the full scale of the service. So I don't know who was in which group. Um, do you want to add anything to this? Okay. Breakout room two, how to show the value of service design to the company. Um, this was actually something that I wrote. <laughs> something that I'm seeing right now um, at the company is that not everyone realizes the value of service design. And it can be sometimes a little bit hard to convince people like, why, why do we even need to do this? Why do we need a service designer? Um, yeah, that's something that I'm seeing right now. Then applying service design jam in the remote world, how to do it remotely, and the difference between service design jam versus design thinking methods. What does the service design industry look like right now? And what to expect when working with service design? Anything you want to add to that? Okay. And breakout room three. Yes, but we have a lot of work. <laughs> That's also kind of something I'm seeing. No time for more projects. Um, yes, and we share a service design project internationally, but it's not the same. Okay. So these are some of the things that people are interested in. Um, I think we can start a presentation, except if anyone still has a comment or question, remark, Let me quickly answer those things because I'm, I'm going to cover a lot of them. Yes, but I will focus on yeah. one of one few things. So for the first thing, I'm a freelancer, cannot go beyond our team. You, you have to always look what you can do and what you can do. You remember Simon Sinek with this bull eye thing. Yes, this is the things which I can do. These are the things which I can influence. And these are the things beyond my inf even influence. So don't even try to touch there. But the things which you can do and you can start influencing for sure. So even if you are isolated within your team, you can do a lot already. Now you can show examples and then people will, oh, they are doing sexy things. I want to do these things again as well. So there, there are possibilities. I work in a large organization and it can be tough to collaborate and to end to understand the full scale of the service. For sure. This is the organization which we're currently working with Nora. It's huge. It's 300 people. For me, it's huge. It's 300 people. Uh, and absolutely unaligned. So we are having a lot of business units and silos and a lot of people are just duplicating the work. So it's, it's really hard to, to implement the service design in such kind of organizations. But again, there are methodologies which you can use and I'll, I'll explain how to do it. So how to show the value of the service design to the company? Um, you need to understand why you're doing this. Just to show the, the, the value of the service design or you think that it will help to do something. Uh, and you are not showing it to the company. First, you need to show to your peers and then to your manager and then start helping your manager to spread this thing or to, to other people. So you don't think about the company if, if the company doesn't know what the service design. You will never, never be successful with this. It starts slowly. Applying service design jam and the remote. Well, this is what we're going to touch in the presentation. Difference between service design jam and uh, so service design jam versus design thinking methods. Uh, I think there is no difference. It's just one of the ways to apply design, design thinking in a compact way. That's it. So again, there is no, they are not competing between each other. You are using design thinking and applying it to, in, a, in a format which is the short kind of interactions. And then that's, that's it. What does the service design industry look like right now? Uh, I have no idea what the whole industry looks like now, but I know that the service design you can apply to any industry, and absolutely. And it, 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 it's not limited with the IT or software, the service related things. As I said, in 2000, uh, 2005, I was implementing the service design. I was building the shipment service from Ural. We were shipping the fertilizers from Ural to Brazil. And that was the thing. What, the ex, what to expect when working with service design. A lot of fun, for sure. <laughs> a lot of fun collaboration, communication, and uh, a lot of interesting things uh, happening, and a lot of bright ideas coming up from very unexpected 
places and very unexpected people. Yes, but have a lot of work. Yeah, that's true. But again, the, the, you need to understand if this is the, the, the mentality and if this is the culture of the company, then probably you should find another company. Uh, I will stop at this topic at the very beginning. If no, then try to see how you can change it. But you need to have allies who will support you. Without support, you will, you will not be able to do it by, by yourself. Yes, and we share our soft uh, service design projects internally, but it's not the same. Um, okay, I don't clearly understand this statement, but we can discuss it further for sure. So let me start then. Let me start. I hope you can see my screen. Good. Okay, good. So virtual service jam or how to create service services being remote. Uh, disclaimer, this is very important thing which I learned a uh, long time ago and which I want to share with you because what I currently see, I'm, I'm working a lot with designers, with the young designers and product managers, what they usually tend to do, they usually tend to grab methodology and try to apply it as is, just trying to nail it where it's not fitable, just because this is from Spotify or this is from Basecamp or this is from that place. No, it doesn't work like this. I've learned a lot of different methodologies in waterfall, in agile, this or that. They never fit as it was described. You always have to look at it, try to understand who were writing this thing for which uh, situations, which companies, maturity level, size, markets, um, even generations. Like, for example, was it written in the 70s? was the situation changed now yes no and then you should always adapt the things and try you take the small piece you adapt it you see you iterate you improve and then you will find your own way each organization is very unique some things are always working some things never work the same way even in very similar uh, organizations so please be very careful when you are applying anything so whatever i say just so yeah, thank you, Nikita, but we will, we will need to think how it fits into our reality. Um, so just shortly about me, I was born in 1975, you know, it was the Soviet Union. Uh, I graduated from the Maritime Academy. I have masters in navigation. I'm a father of two daughters. I moved to Portugal in 2015 with my own project. And the project was um, was aimed to Russia. I was building it with my Russian friends, but we had to kill the project because of the war, because one of my partners was uh, having a high rank in the uh, political structure of Russia. And we don't, we didn't want to expose him to the risk. So because I'm Ukrainian, we decided to stop the project, but it helped me to move to Portugal because the team which I uh, selected for the implementation of the project, they said, hey, we like you just come to this uh, to this lovely Lisbon. And I loved Lisbon from the very moment I joined. I'm a product manager and a service designer. I like, I like life, that's it. And uh, I like torturing with why questions. In some companies which are not mature completely, I'm having an issue with this because like, no, 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 you are deep, trying to dig too deep and you are trying to um, like, uh, to show our incompetence. Come on, I'm not trying to show your incompetence. I'm just trying to understand the context. The more I will learn about the situation, the more I will learn about the context, the better I, I will be able to help you. So instead of boring introduction, let's face the brutal reality. This is the second um, disclaimer or like warning which I want to share with you. From my understanding, this is very important. If it's not your business, it's not your business. So what does it mean? It means that you should stop killing yourself trying to bring service design, design thinking or whatever methodology you are trying to evangelize in your organization if you see the resistance. Again, it's not your business. So just stop torturing yourself and others 
and stop seeing others as your enemies like oh they're stupid they don't accept this design thinking user-centered design and so on it doesn't work like this so you cannot like squeeze it into the mindset if the mindset is not ready so try to focus on all types of customers internal external try to find the best way to help them with their challenges but first you need to understand their challenges and uh, it, it's you because you have a special skill to see the real problem while a lot of people are not able to see the real problem they see the tip of the iceberg but they're not able to ask wise and deep dive into the real problem but if you look at the real problem we can help a lot of uh, to solve a lot of other problems or consequence problems. so I, I want to recommend you this uh, this interesting book this is design your life and it shows how you can apply design thinking method and design methods in improving your life it's very easy reading it was built by designers who are having many years of experience so again yeah, this book will show that design can be applied to anything just you need to look at the way how to how to apply it so really quickly i will try to explain like why i'm sharing this with you yes the the main idea of the topic is how to do the service jams uh, remotely but before you jump into the hey let's do the service jam you need to understand why you need it just because you learned yesterday the new methodology no you need to to find the the, the problem which is good enough or where the application of service jam will will help your organization or your team to solve something but just the plan it blindly hmm, no don't do this so try to focus on the real problem always not so how you can explain it to to your management for example or you, you need to sell the idea of this thing yes so you can say that our oh, user center design is helping us to focus on the real problem and not just the great idea you can always be ahead of competitors why you can work with a lot with the um, with the startups i found that very few of them are using user centered design in general a lot of them they claim that the, yeah yeah we're user centered design oriented or whatever but very few are using user centered design in, in majority they just have a great idea and they code the great idea and then they face the brutal market reality mm, uh, market doesn't like our solution and the major thing which i think you can which will help you to sell the idea of user-centered design, service design, design thinking, everything which is focusing on the problem first, is the reduction of the cost of change. This is an amazing scheme which helped me a lot of times in my past uh, life, convincing the management of the companies to start implementing or start thinking of implementing the, uh, the design because at the beginning we have such a huge amount of capabilities and it costs us very little just to draw on the paper and prototype with the paper in one, two days, you will have the, uh, the feedback from the real users. And uh, it's very costly if you spend two years and then you drop the, the product on the market and market is refusing this. So, and then organizational chart, again, like you need to understand to whom you are selling this idea because this, I really like this, um, this image because it shows the real situation in the company. Yeah? So we need to understand to whom you are going to sell this and with which arguments you're going to sell them and what, what, is, the, what is the design thinking or what is the value of this design thinking is for them personally. And we think that we people are um, rational and, uh, and we think that we are thinking um, again to support our company and benefiting our company. No, 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 we are emotional creatures and we're thinking always about ourselves. So try to find those things which will trigger them and then sell it personally to each person individually. Um, I was having the very interesting challenge. I need to build the project management office in the former Soviet huge commercial bank. So the average age of the, of the people, we have, we're having 16,000 people working in the bank. The average age was 45 years. And I was about 30 at that time. So for me, it was really a huge challenge to sell the idea that we need to start building the project management office individually with each of the team uh, heads and then department heads. Sometimes I was, bring, uh, was bringing Brandy and then drinking with them, just pushing these kind of things. But again, like 
this is the very tricky thing you need to understand to whom you're selling and to what. You cannot just come and have a, a big workshop to the whole company. Hey, now we're introducing the design thinking. No, it doesn't work like this, unfortunately. Again, if the organization is not ready, you need to work individually. So small particularity about the user-centered design, which we tend to forget. So in this loop, there are two things which are user needs and the business objectives. You should always balance between them. If you jump to one like user-centered, completely user-user-centered, then there will be no business because like what user wants? I want everything without paying money. And what business wants? I want money, but I don't care about the users. Always try to balance. How to balance? Uh, for example, one quarter you're focusing on the user needs, another quarter you're focusing on the business needs. This could be the thing, or one spring for business, one spring for, for user, or combine them both if you can. But like if business is pushing, no, 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 guys, we need to bring back the focus. So I, you know what is service design. Just I want to show when it, when it started to be like public, yes. So 2005, Stefan Maris was saying uh, the first public thing, yeah, so the first public uh, notion was in 2005. Then in 2008, 30, uh, 31 volts um, stated it a bit different. I really like this, um, this statement when you have two coffee shops right next to each other and each sells the exact same coffee at exactly the same price. Service design, what makes you work into one and not to another. You can see it on the street. There are two restaurants, one is always full, another is always empty. You start asking, you cannot answer the question uh, really clearly, but if you visit the one and if you visit the other, emotions which you will keep when you're exiting will push you to the one which was having the better service. Again, all of this service design and design is about emotions. At the end, I should have pos uh, positive emotions. This is what will bring me back to the service. I hope you know what a service design. So I will try to skip it quickly. Just stop me or like pause me. No, 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 we don't know. And I, then I can go into details, but I really recommend you this guide to service blueprinting by Adaptive Plus. It has a lot, it's, you can Google it and you will jump immediately to this PDF. And they have um, really good examples and I'm using them every time I need to present the service design concept or the idea. So the core principles, I'll stop on them. It's human-centered, co-creative, orchestrated, tangible, holistic. Uh, this is the value of the whole thing. So what to expect when you implement the service design? A lot of interaction with the people, a lot of creative sessions, a lot of interesting orchestrations of the people, tools, uh, teams, processes, roles, vendors, customers, customers from one side, customers from another side, tangible, a lot of work with the post-its, and holistic, you will have an amazing view on the, on the whole company, how the company is working. And I've seen a lot of like, eye-opening moments when the people are finally looking at the organizational map where they see the whole thing from the very the beginning till the very end, like, wow, that's amazing. And that moment is really something that I, I really like. Uh, so it's it worth to invest the time and bring the people uh, to see that moment. So where to put the service design in the organization? Uh, you should put it on top. Uh, it's really hard to explain because like, oh, what does it mean? It means that I have to be close to the CEO. Yes, you have to be close to the CEO. But, but service design is a function, it's not a position. So this is the misconception which we usually have. And this is the thing, if you start explaining from the very beginning, Look, guys, I'm not pretending to be the boss of the bosses. No, 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 no. I'm not an administrative person. I'm a function, a function which helps to align the whole company and the whole organization. Then it will make your life easier because then you will remove this fear of, oh, he's stepping on my territory. He's going to kick me out because this is the threat for me. No, no, no. I'm not exposing any threat. Absolutely. I, I'm here just to support you. Um, Again, if organization is not ready to give such a role authority, don't push. You will be there very soon. As soon as they will see the value, you will be there. They will give you this authority. They will push you to that position, but don't push it from the very beginning. Start with small changes. Again, don't kill yourself. Again, the wall of humans change slowly. Humans change slowly. 
So remember this, it will take you four to six months. If you're coming to an organization which never was working before with the service design, it will take you about half a year for the organization to see, yeah, the service design, by the way, that this is an interesting thing. Let's try it on one of the projects. Can I apply service design in my organization? Yes, in any organization, like public, private, big, small, whatever. The difference is in strategy and the difference is in the maturity. So based on maturity of organization, the strategy is different. And about the maturity of organization. So this chart was taken from, uh, from the web, from the block of the website of the cost service design. This is the Netherlands based uh, service design uh, company. I really like them. I know them person in person and I really like the, the things which they do and the approach which they're using in their work. So if you really need, uh, if you have a budget, because they are not cheap, uh, but if you have a budget and if you really need to quickly kick on uh, the knowledge inside of the organization, if you want to train the organization, if you want to get the results from the, the research and they can help you with shaping the future for the next one, two years, call them. They really worth any cent which you will spend for them. So they come up with this maturity model Depending on at which level you are, the strategy is a bit different, but you can understand just entering the, the organization where the organization is. If they never heard about service design, they're at level one. If they heard something, so in half a year, you will be close to the proof model, yeah, where the first pilot project to taste the service design, which is driven by enthusiasts, and you will have the service blueprint. This is exactly what we're building right now. So the organization already has the taste and the, the, they understand, oh, this is something that we can benefit from. And it's driven by the enthusiasts, yes, mainly me, my manager, Nora, and the people like, like, like her. Uh, but we already see the, the good changes. Then you scale, more you involve more people after the first project, of course, they are, yeah, we need this. Then probably at some moment you create the CX department and then you start uh, service design trainings and toolkits. Then you integrate. So people across the company know what they do personally impacting the company goals. Yes. So design led foundation you need to have already. And thrive. This is the service design it is a company wide methodology. And now it's, it's integral part of the company culture. It's pushed from the C level. They know the value. They don't want to spend their time and effort on something else. And they want to be super efficient because they see how fast they can move and how efficient they can be with this. How to explain? So there again, depending on the, the maturity of the organization, if they don't know the value, start with general concept. Again, don't push. It can be all, not all hands. Like we have this knowledge sharing once a month sessions where you just present the whole thing very softly, very gently. And uh, you need to identify the biggest needs at the moment and you try to connect them with the user-centered design so you can show that, okay, so we can address this with the user-centered design. Or if we do the interview, don't say user-centered design, just apply the methodologies or the, the, the tools which, which we usually use in this discussion. Like, okay, so we can use the really quick user research it's, it doesn't take too much time or money, but in one week we will get a better understanding of things. Or we can run a survey to have these things. So we can do this, or we can prototype. It's very simple, it's very fast. We can do it on a paper. Introduce the double diamond, explain specifics. Yes, and then explain how it may speed up implementation and why we have this double diamond. So with the prototyping and try to sell this idea to, of multiple experiments but be very careful with the marketing. They love the idea of running multiple experiments at the same time. And what they think as an experiment in, in their heads is that you build something, you build five copies, they are very different, but it's already solid. And then you run five experiments at the same time, you see what is the best one, and then you push, you like bet on that one. So with the experiments which we designers are running, it's a bit different. But you can cope with the marketing and you can bring them to the table again, explaining them those kind of things. And you can start finding these people who personally will benefit from implementation of the user centered design. Just, hey, I can help you with this. Like, what, what do you think if we run this kind of experiment? Oh, okay. So you can, uh, you can make it like this. Again, like you need to sell it to a lot of key people in person. So grab them for lunch. 
have lunch and discuss the things. And then, by the way, you know that we can solve this problem by using this methodology. I can help you with this if you want. It takes some time. This is why from the initial stage till the, oh, yes, let's try it. It, it may take four or six months. And then like what we did recently, like months ago, I think, uh, we showed how you can connect double diamond with the agile software methodology. So, and uh, by this, we ended up a very uh, toxic cycle of putting the design sprint inside of the two weeks agile sprint, which was killing everyone, designers and engineers. So we just separated them, explained the value and they said, hey, we're doing this and we're feeding the backlog and then you can do agile things. So this is, this is relieving a lot of pains in a lot of organizations. And when you show that benefit for engineers, when you show the benefit for product managers or for uh, designers or for business, they will buy it very quickly because again, you are increasing the efficiency. So the, the, it could be the case if they know, but they don't use it because you need to find the reason why they don't use it. Can be, CEO is a self-proclaimed product guru, father of the great idea. Uh, that's the most complicated thing. Uh, I've tried to implement the um, service design in different companies. In the uh, last one, I was able to convince the founders that we need to change the CEO. And uh, so one of the outcomes of the, of the application of the service design methodologies and like trying to understand what is not working inside of our organization was the understanding that we have two broken things. We don't have product and the CEO is not acting as the CEO. So we, we changed it. And then we changed the product. So now organization is doing a bit better, but because of the COVID we had a really tough time, but again, that kicked the creativity. In most of the other organization, except another one, it didn't work at all. So if you see the resistance, don't push, just leave. That's my suggestion. And if, if I knew this at the very beginning of my career, I would, it would save me a lot of nerves and a lot of years of fighting against the walls because it doesn't worsen. It. If it's a sales-driven organization, you can still convince sales that focus on the product, focus on the real problem, will give them better understanding how to sell and what to sell. What each sales driven organization is struggling is if they don't have the product and if they sell it, whatever, we see this a lot. Right? Just give them something that they can easily sell, explain them the value. And if they understand it, they will better sell this thing which they understand and which they know how to sell. Because selling the air or selling anything is really hard. But if they know what to sell, it will help them. Engineering driven organization, this is more complex. But with the engineering driven organization, you can explain with the cost of change. So you show them how, like we need to change here. Oh no, it will take half a year. Okay, you see, you see the problem. But if we apply the, the user center design and service design, then it will be much cheaper. And then we can do the small changes much faster. Fast growing organization. This is the pain. In the fast growing organization, service design should start with the processes and, uh, and um and the roles definition like what we see often is the organization was like 10 people then they grew to 30 and then sudden growth 200 300 so from 30 to, to 300 in order to grow uh, naturally and efficiently these 30 need to set these the roles and the processes inside even if you need 50 roles you need to set it when you are still 30 still 10 because then you will grow really easily. You will just put these hats to the newcomers and then they know how to work. So the role of this service designer here will be focusing on putting the processes in place and in collaboration before you go further. And money from the heaven, I've been working in one of the such organizations. They got 20 million just from nothing. So it was crowdfunded thing, uh, crypto related. And they were burning money like, yeah, so we won the lottery and they were building the product for two years. And when they shipped the product, it was clear that the market doesn't need this, this great idea. So in this organization, it's really hard and you need to wait for them to fail in order to start selling the idea of the service design. If they are resistant from the very beginning. So if they resist to use it because of 
ba, ba, ba. Yes. Again, try to find the real reason. Few possible reasons: too tight, aggressive financial goals. You can, you should look at this. If this is the problem, try to try to build the following thing. Okay, so we have the goal till the end of the year to make 10 million, for example, 10 million something, just 10 million dollars. And what does it mean? We're in the middle of the year. It means that each minute we need to make 20 dollars. If we're not making 20 dollars each minute, especially if you are in a SaaS business we will not be able to, to, to achieve the goal. So what does it mean? Like we cannot make this 20, $20 per minute because we have a lot of bottlenecks and the processes are not working. The software is not capable of doing this or the sales team is too slow or too lazy. Pick one or pick everything, select most impactful and start working on this or show at least that this goal, financial goal is, is impossible to reach. No internal pusher. This is happening as well. As everyone is okay with their position, they are just doing what they were doing and everything is rolling up as it was rolling. Try to find the internal pusher. You will not be able to push it yourself. Even if you're on the top, if you work, even if you're on the top, you should work with the CEO and then CEO can be internal pusher. If there is no internal pusher, it will not work. A negative experience in the past. I've seen these organizations as well. Ah, we tried the service design two years ago. It didn't work. Two years ago, the team was four times less. It was 2018. The situation on the market was completely different. There were no COVID. There were not this, this, and this. And the way we, not the way you did it, even if you were not there, the way we did it was a bit wrong or like not try not, try not to criticize. We could do it better. So let's try another way. So again, try to find the um, the possible um, possible way to sell. It's about it's about selling. It's always about selling. Whatever you um, trying to apply logic or trying to call for logic doesn't work. Show them numbers. Show them numbers of personal benefit or both. If it's both, works perfectly. If you tried everything and failed it over, run. Don't spend your life there. Uh, don't be afraid to be a ah, loser or whatever. You are running from the uh, from the challenges. Yes, because I tried, I failed, and I don't want to kill my life here. Farewell. Problem focus idea selling. How how we can sell the problem focus idea? Again, this chart works magically. You just but you need to show the examples. Try to find and share the examples of of failed great ideas. I have them a lot from my personal experience. If you don't have them, Google them. Don't focus on the companies like, oh, Google failed with this. No, find something which is very similar to you in the size on the same market that they compare. Because like when you're comparing yourself with Facebook or Google, you're comparing apples with oranges. Compare something which is comparable. And then show this example, couple of examples. And say, Guys, we don't want to follow the same route. Yeah, we, we are running out of money deep dive into great idea together and show uh that the problem when the problem is identified show that there, there are multiple ways to solve it again how might we because if you come from the great idea to the problem how might we you can find different ways to solve it and show how you like be creative try to to propose different ways and see them that uh, oh there is a benefit of of looking at this show that the problem may be a consequence of other bigger problems uh, I will not stop, but I will just drop this uh, information. There is a theory of constraints, which was created in the 70s by Eliyahu Goldratt. And there is a methodology which is called uh, um, current reality tree. It's much more than five ways. So if you Google it, you can find a lot of examples, amazing methodology. I'm using it since 2010, and I was able to convince a lot of managers to change because we were able to find the root cause, which was in influencing 70, 80% of, of, of other problems. So show that if, uh, several problems may be interconnected. Again, like this, show the efficiency of how might we and how might we, uh, and how else might we exercise. Just take small example, run how might we, how might we else, and show them the output. If all, about, uh, if all above didn't work, Remind about the cost of change. Again, like this is what we can do now, and this is what we, we, we need to do at the end when we will implement it. 
if you tried everything, again, run, don't spend the time. Um, just a short history. So this is me, who is like the close, close to you. Uh, and this is my team. Uh, we were in three years in a row, our team was winning a one nautical mile boat race. Uh, we usually, yeah, we usually give this example. Yes, we, we are in the team, we're in a boat, we need to row at the same direction. So first we need to swim in the same direction, then we, will, we need to row uh, with the same, uh, same tent. Uh, but th this is not the successful story. This is just a part of success uh, story. You need to have a strategy and you need to have a tactics. Like, for example, we had a strategy how to win the race. We were training a lot and we were learning how to work together. So first, we, we, we need to learn how to work together, especially when you're coming to the new, new team, new company. You need to understand how the people are working right now because you're going to change this thing. And then you start pushing them towards collaboration and then you see how they collaborate with each other. And then they learn how to work together. The next step, let's learn how to work together efficiently. So you need to give it a time and you need to give it a try. It's the, uh, the interactive process. Uh, what helps a lot is draw a car instead of uh, service blueprint. If you have an Uber-like uh, organization, like if you have the drivers and the, uh, the passengers, they need to build to service, these, uh, service blueprints. Always remember this because a lot of startups are failing on this. They're trying to squeeze everything into one. No, it doesn't work like this. They have an interconnection, but this interconnection is quite small. So you can ice and you should isolate those things. So the easiness of decisions, having a holistic view. When you have a service blueprint, it's super easy to show how the changes in one place will affect another. And everyone in your organization will love this view. So if the organization knows a bit about service design or about user-centered design, start building the service blueprint, start involving people and build this holistic, huge map. It's really worth it. So one of the reasons why people are afraid of uh, introducing the user-centered design is the fear of talking to the customer. And you can find a lot of excuses. Um, I know the customer is better as I was the customer myself. Bullshit. No, you were just one tiny example of the, of the customer. So you cannot extrapolate it to everyone else. We don't have time for this as we need to move fast. We, we saw it in one of the posts. Yes. We, we don't have time. Okay, go ahead. I always remember this, that uh, cartoon, which is like the guys are trying to pull the, the cage with the square wheels. And one of another one is proposing them the round one. No, 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 we don't have time. Go away. So um, again, like give examples, apply examples to your team slowly. Don't push and gently, gently push them towards the things which you need to do. No, um, so for example, you can, Ask someone for help. Hey, can you help me to run the interview? Nora knows it very well. So with this methodology, we were able to share the, uh, the value of the, uh, of the interviews to half of the company, right? <laughs> that was really amazing example. Later, ask them to lead the interview involved in the results analysis. So finally, how to run the thing. Uh, the thing is very simple. So it consists of several parts. For those who doesn't know what a series design, design jam is. So I want to, uh, Vanya, we were on the last one. Yes, not the last one. One pre-last one when we had the, the challenge, yes, no, yes, no, maybe. So yeah. that was, a, yeah. Yes. So that was a really interesting challenge. So the, the, the whole idea is the following. About 100 cities all over the world at the same time of at the same local time in Friday, it's like 7 p.m. I think they they they've got the challenge. So the challenge in our case it was yes no yes no maybe, and then we were split into five teams, and each team have to convert it into the problem assumption, and then validate the problem assumption, thing ideate, come up with the prototype, and at the end present this uh, uh, validated with other um, other teams like from other cities we were calling uh, to Sao Paulo and then in some other cities. And at the end you do the presentation and that's the whole thing. In between you have a sessions where designers and service designers are explaining the, how, how to do the next step and sharing some experience. I strongly recommend you to visit this kind of thing. As soon as you have possibility to do it in person, in person, it's amazing. In remote, Okay, at least remote. This is this is uh, really cool. So the last one was in August. It was remote. 
The next one should be about March usually. So that's about what is service design. Uh, then how to define the problem concept, how to plan, how to prepare, how to conduct, how to wrap up and how to, be, uh, to get maximum value. So again, don't start the service uh, jam without the clear understanding why you're starting it. Don't just do it. It will not work. You need to have a clear problem. In one of the companies, uh, I decided to run the service jam because I wanted to share the idea of user-centered design value of this user-centered design. I need to improve the collaboration between teams. I need to break the silos. I need to improve the communication and I need to share uh, what each team was doing and why it's so important for us to be aligned. So that was the very ambitious goal, but we achieved it using just the service, the, uh, service jam. So uh, identify the problem concept. You, the, what is the problem concept? This one, yes, no, yes, no, maybe. So this is the, the problem concept which you drop on them, pushing them to start thinking, okay, so how it is connected. Um, identify several problems you want to address. If you have allies, if you have the, 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 the supporters, discuss with them which problems do you want to touch. Identify them, prioritize them. See if you can group them in a single concept. Uh, what is usually working with me, I'm using the pain at the end. For example, crypto is the pain. Uh, that workshop which we had, uh, so the team was 40 people, five teams, and completely remote. And that was the motto. So we split into five teams. Out of five teams, three generated amazing ideas to come up with the products. And it was just one day workshop. Teaching kids programming is a pain. There was the workshop which... Uh, done with the uh, with company in Vienna. It was very small, eight, eight people. So we had just two teams, but they had a really good understanding of why working together and why breaking this up. Eight team people, come on. And they had silos and they were not talking to each other. That was amazing. Bycatch is the pain. Bycatch is the, um, is the waste, um, waste fish, which you catch when, when you're fishing with the nets. In one of the startups, they were having a team of 15 people. They wanted to boost creativity in the team. That was the thing. And it was uh, also successful. So then test this uh, problem concept with someone. Just drop this concept on someone and ask, what are the associations? OK, is it fit into the, the, the group of the problems which you want to address? Good. If not, reiterate. So planning. Planning is very important. Uh, you need to have a, you need to work on the problem concept. Yes. So then, uh, so, no, sorry. You need to identify goals. Again, like going a bit, um, a bit back. Look at the problems which you have. All of these, I've touched them. They work really well and you can address them. Team spirit improvements, working on the pain, like problem concept, collaboration boost activity, communication improvement activity, knowledge pain sharing activity, involving C-level or VP into the game, showing the value of teamwork over individuals, breaking the fear of talking to the customer's activity. Again, if you're working in a big organization, you don't need to bring the C-level from the very beginning. Try small, try within your department, try within your team. Do it really small. Show the value, create the, uh, the buzz, and let people talk. And then you will see people start approaching you. Hey, can you tell us how to do this thing? Because we also want it. Especially in the governmental organization when, when you work really isolately, but the information is spreading quite good during the cooler uh, things or the virtual coffee or those kind of things. This may work really well when you start small. Uh, schedule interviews. This is very important thing because again, uh, Nora can tell you, this is taking most of the time when you're preparing the user research. So you need to pre-select possible uh, people whom you interview, plan whom you interview, ask to be ready for the certain time. You know exactly the time when it will happen. So the day of the jam, it's usually from 11 to 12. Uh, create an event in your calendar for each separate participant because then you will drop this event to, uh, to the groups and make sure that participants are aware of how to use the communication channel. Uh, surprise, surprise, before our meetup, I started the Zoom and because my Zoom was an old version, I was not able to start. So we had a session, thanks to Mikhail and to Nora, we had a session before and we tested the whole thing, how it's working. 
planning, invite helpers, you will need helpers. So uh, like if you have one team, you don't need it. But if you have two, three teams, you will need someone who is present, constantly present in this team that will help you to run the thing, kick the, the, the creativity or push them from the blockers or just raise the hand and bring you to the conversation when, when you need it. Um, so try to identify who can be, it can be designers or the product managers or whomever, someone who can help and whom, whom you trust. Have, you have to debrief them and prepare in advance and they are supporting the team and build like being a bridge between you and the team. Split the teams, make sure to split those who are tightly connected, separate them always. Those friends who are constantly chatting and, and mixing together, separate them. Separate the C level into different groups. Uh, try to make teams as much multidisciplinary uh, disciplinary as possible. And always look at the teams who is the most shy person. Don't over push because usually this is, these are the introverts. So they don't like to be exposed to public or they don't like to speak, but give them the possibility to share their opinion. And try to suppress those who are constantly like generating the ideas as fun things. Like, thank you very much. Okay, next, 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 next. So give everyone the possibility to, to express themselves. Try to have not more than five people in the team. It's really hard when the team is more than five people. And uh, I've the maximum which I was running. So we were running five, five teams and we were having like seven, eight people. It was hard. Five teams, seven, eight people. It's really hard. Plan. Define the next steps, always. Again, like you decided to conduct service jam because of, and you have the list of things why you decided to do this. And then you need to define the next steps. Discuss it with your manager or with the people who are supporting you with driving this service jam. What will be the next steps? For example, one of the next steps which we've done uh, at one of the, uh, of the companies we wanted to introduce the user-centered design. We wanted to bring the value or explain the value of the user research. But the, the main idea was for us to kick off uh, the, um, the, diverse, the, the diversification of the product because we've been heavily hit by the COVID and we needed a new product. So the idea was to share the knowledge of how you do it. And then the next week we had a three days jam but it was, it was the design sprint, actually. We started with the problem. So we spent half a day for, for the problem statement. The next half of the day, we were ideating. Uh, on Tuesday, half of the Tuesday designers were drawing the things and the user flows. And um, I was acting as the product manager during the last part of the Tuesday. I built the um, product specs. And on Wednesday and Thursday, three engineers built the prototype. It was amazing team effort. Everyone knew what is expected. Everyone knew the value and we were working so efficiently as the team that in four days, we were able to deliver working prototype, which our sales team, of course, started to sell <laughs> immediately. But that was a good validation. So at least we knew that there is an interest on the market and it took us like one and a half months to complete the, the product to put all the security things in place, all the edge cases and, and testing, but it was worse the effort. So plan the next steps because you need it and you need to conduct it like within one week after the service jam. If, if you need to prepare the ground, again, it's your game, it's your chess game. So you need to prepare the ground that during the, uh, the, the jam, you are picking up the, uh, the topics, then you're putting them in the list and then you are giving the, the proposal for the next steps. And again, don't conduct service jam just because you learned something new. No, it, it, it will not work. So prepare yourself. That's also super important. Uh, you can do whatever, like you can use the paper or the pencil. I was using the paper and the pencil, it works. You, you just grab your computer, you show the, the, the image or you show it in front of the thing. They do the screenshot and we work um, collaboratively. Or later I, I bought myself an iPad and I really like, so it, for me, it was an investment. It, it's expensive thing, 12 inch, but it's really worth the money you spend. I'm using concepts and I'm using pencil so I can show how it look like. 
Can you still see my screen? So you can draw and write. Like here, you can zoom in, zoom out, so you can have an interactive discussion. It's really, really good, and it's really worth it. Worth it. So iPad pencil concepts, quick time cable and setup. So you need to connect. The, the only dark side of, of the iPad is that you can share. You cannot share the screen directly. You need to connect it with the cable, and then you need to use quick time. But that's that's minority. You need to have a timer for sure. So you need to keep track of the time. All presentations have to be open and ready. Don't spend time on preparing this. Everything has to be ready. Close everything which you don't need. Remove the notifications. Focus on just only this thing. You need to have a dynamic Excel schedule. So what does it mean? If you late somewhere, you need to go to this Excel, change the time, and then the rest of the time will automatically change that you can keep the track of the timings. Prepare lunch in advance. You will have just one hour. And in most of the cases, you will have just 20 minutes because there will be some questions or some things which you need to solve during the lunch break. So you need to, you need to eat. Prepare snacks and drinks, a lot of drinks, because as soon as you talk a lot, you, you need uh, water. Two monitors is a must. With one monitor, don't even try to do this. It's super hard. Charge your headphones, mouse, everything which have to be charged, charge. Make sure your neighbors are not planning unexpected attack because sometimes this is happening. So have a plan B. And you need to have a really good internet. Otherwise, again, you will just create a frustration. I hope my internet is good. <laughs> uh, so preparing session with the team. Before an event, you need to have a session with the team. So before this session, you need to talk to your helpers. You need to explain them how they work. You need to explain the whole thing. You need to share the presentation, which I shared uh, afterwards, uh, but you need to prepare them. So the half a day before the jam, usually it's from three to uh, 6 p.m. You uh, unite the whole team and explain what is service jam, why you need it. So you have the goals, right? How it will be, you explain the whole thing, you show the schedule. Announce the team split. So yes, you already have the team split. You announce, okay, so you will be in this team and you will be in that team. Helper will be there or the team lead will be there. Try to avoid putting this the, the, manage, the top manager as the team lead because they will ruin the whole thing. No, they have to be just regular team member. Explain the process itself, explain the schedule, expected results. Agree on the tools which you're going to use. Again, Myra boards, calls, uh, group chats, Zoom is not that great for, for those kind of things. Uh, probably, again, probably something changed since I last time was running. It was half a year ago. Uh, probably some, some things changed because you, Mikhail, you were sh able to drop me to some teams. So probably there is a functionality which they already developed for this. So try to explore it and test it before. Uh, we, I was using and I was very happy with the Google Hangouts. I had several tabs and I was able to, to switch between the tabs and it was super easy. My super uh, works really good. Um, common chat, Slack, yes, Teams, probably yes. Uh, what was really bad? Whatever. So try the tools. Explain lunch, lunch break. Also, they need to prepare the lunch break before. Yes. And explain that this is the full day event, so they will not be able to work. If someone is going is need to work, okay, agree that they will not participate because otherwise it's 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 really useless. So the day finally the day came. Starting the jam before the jam, team helpers should provide you with the links to the chat rooms, video calls, matter boards, so you have all the setup ready. Uh, starting shop at nine thirty sharing the service jam how to the presentation with the helpers the presentation which i shared uh, at the end you are announcing the problem concept you explain how to break it into the problem statement assumption and you're officially kicking off the jam so since this moment they started to work you need to jump from team to team following their discussions helping when needed responding to this question in the general chat supporting helpers so please keep track especially at the very beginning jump between the teams one minute here one minute there if there is a blocker keep them give them boost explain the things but try to 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 energize them track the time seriously there will be a lot of places where you will be late try to avoid it because it will ruin the whole 
the whole schedule. Uh, try to finish it not later than 6 p.m., the whole thing, because otherwise everyone will be super exhausted. And uh, the effect of the ending will not be that exciting. If you can finish it at 5, 5.30, perfect. Uh, yeah, kick the teams in the general chat five minutes before the end of each phase. Adjust your dynamic schedule if you are uh, late. Run a short intro before each next step. Give examples, answer the questions. This is a very important thing. This is what I'm not giving you. But this, is some, that, this is something that you have to create yourself. So before each phase, you need to run a really short session showing the examples how to do it and explaining what is expected on the next step. Why I'm not giving this to you? Because you will find better examples. You may find it from your own life or from others. Uh, you can be very creative. I'm not that creative in making the presentations. So as you see, I'm using just the standard PowerPoint template. So, but you can do it much better than me. And please keep it seriously because based on how you explain the next phase, they will do it good or they will do it bad. So during the jam, uh, most of the issues are happening at the problem assumption definition phase, interview script creation phase and jobs to be done generation phase. Uh, so why I'm preferring to, uh, to use jobs to be done during the jam, so during the really quick uh, quick service uh, design sprints or service sprints, because it, there is no time for creating the proper persona. And personally, I don't really uh, like personas. So I prefer jobs to be done because much simpler, you can explain it very easily and you can focus on the really, <laughs> yes, Rania, yes, really important thing. So, and then for this purpose, jobs to be done, I fit really well. So how might we infer the teams with the, with the prototyping? It usually works fine, so they understand how it works. But at the beginning, you need to really support them and help them, especially with the interview script. Because people are starting to ask uh, very closed questions, like yes, no, we know that it will not work, so guide them with this. Another critical phase is business model canvas. Usually we don't do this at all. Like during the design sprint, we don't touch this topic, but this is super important, especially if you are touching some great ideas. And then when you're asking the key question, like uh, what is the business behind it? Which business? No, it's a... <laughs> so this helps to ground them down. Each great idea should have a business. We're not NGO, we should have a business. Um, but it takes some time and it takes some skills. So if you see that you are skipping if, and if you, if you can skip it, skip it, but I suggest you not if the topic is very serious. Uh, make sure the teams are ready for the interviews before the time which you book. So at 11, they need to start interviews. So at this moment, you're just sharing or connecting them with the, with the events that you created and they, that they can jump immediately to speak with the people. Um, add a shelter to, to in my yard. So uh, continue jumping from team to team, supporting if needed, jump to the interviews, help them again, but not too much because this is the moment when they learn, where they fight with their fear of talking to real people. Um, make sure that you, the teams are not losing focus. And that because of the amount of the team and because of the format, they may lose the focus very quickly. So five, 10 minutes, not, not five, 10, 15 minutes, and you may lose the team completely. So they may lose the focus and they will they may go completely in the wrong direction. Then you need to bring them back. Hey, guys, no, 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 no. This is the way you need to go. And uh, note the challenges which the teams are facing that may be connected with your goals. This is the moment when you pick it up and this will help you. You see, you see, you, do you remember your reaction or do you remember that discussion which you had you see how we solved it, huh? Yeah. And then the yesterday we were having it, and so this is where you start teaching them the value of the of those kind of things. And presentation and closing the jump. While teams are working on the presentation, make sure they do at least one rehearsal before the real presentation, because again, at this stage you may see, oh shit, they selected the wrong problem, they selected the wrong uh, solution, they completely messed up the whole thing. This is the moment when, this is the last moment when you can fix it. Usually you have to do it before and you have to track these things before, but sometimes it happens. So make sure that they have this time. 
uh, kick their creativity as they need to make an old remote presentation. So there will be several people. Uh, you can ask, okay, so you will be the system or you will be the service. You will be the customer. You will be the provider or the, the, the vendor. And then the in the common chat, they, they speak, they, but they know their roles. So it, it, have, it can be a play, um, play, a theater, a yeah, kind of theater. So this works really good. If they start showing something on the screen, that's also good. If they start building the prototypes, coding, or especially if you have a front-end developer in the team, they immediately start doing the HTML. Uh, try to avoid this. No, show us the value presented. So it has to be a presentation. Randomly call the team for the presentation so they don't know the sequence. After all presentations are done, you can do whatever voting system you can. I, I was using Easy Retro. Mario can be as well. After voting, announce the winner. So the voting, again, it's up to you how to build it. Like half, 50% can come from the team, 50 from the management, or the whole um, portion should come from the team. Again, it doesn't matter. Always run the feedback session with the teams. Ask them, okay, so what, what have we learned today? And then just like, those whom you want to share their experience, you name them because you need to drive the whole thing. This is very important. It's a play, it, again, it's a chess game. Yeah, You need to pick the right people. You need to pick the right voices and you need to amplify them because this was the end game goal to show that thing. Uh, at the end, make your conclusions again. Pick up those, cherry pick up those which you wanted to highlight. Call the management to discuss possible next steps. Present next steps and nail the next action items. In a week, we're going to start this or that, like all oh, close the sessions and get yourself a drink because it's super exhausting. At the end of the day, like completely that. So the manual, finally. Right, where is it? It's here. And now let me show you the help, uh, the, the document which I'm sharing, the presentation which I'm sharing with the, with the helpers just to help them run the script itself. Nora, thank you very much for putting it so nicely and applying this nice design to it because it was super ugly with awful colors. So you tell them, okay, so first we're framing the challenge, then we do discover, define, how might we, but you explain them all of these steps bef the day before, so they know what to, ex what to expect. Then we have ideation, prototyping, storytelling, presentation, and results. You show them the schedule. So this is how we're going to work. Usually again, this time is enough. If you really push them and really keep them focused, this time is, super enough for you to run uh, um, one day service jam with a really good results. You start with the framing challenge. You explain what is it. You remember I was telling you like five minutes presentation, you show the examples, you explain how the thing is working. And then you are explaining the, the steps they need to do. So you show the time. So we start at 9.30, we end at 10.10, it's 40, 40 minutes, 30 minutes for the work, 40 minutes for the whole thing because you need to spend and like five minutes for intro and five minutes for examples. Collect all the paints from your team, ask each author of the paint to describe it. So you're splitting, you, they're already in the teams and they're working on the teams. And then they do voting, discuss winner, paint, formulate the paint. Each team have to come up with this statement. We assume that user may need user needs because assumptions. Always stress that this is assumption, this is assumption, just stick into their head that this is assumption and show that expected uh, result. Again, agree where this expected result should be in a motherboard or there, there, there. Discover, split the teams into two sub teams. So this is the user research. Try to split them into teams. And uh, when you split, try to split those whom you know they don't need to get the value of the user research or it doesn't need to like finance team, for example. They don't care about this. Or some others, like for example, some managers or product managers. I've seen a lot of product managers who doesn't do the user research at all and who are afraid of the users. So push them to do their job finally. So one team should be focused on user research. So they're running the interviews. 
uh, explain it. So an amazing person for for the reference and to to explain how to do is Nora. So you can approach her. I hope she will not kick me after this and you afterwards. <laughs> but she's an expert in running user research and she can explain how to do it in a proper way. So the second team is the market research. They need to Google the things. So looking into different sources and collecting the, the, the market emails. Yeah, you can do a lot during the 70 minutes. You can learn a lot about the market. Expected outcome, we have learned that. Two teams sharing what they've learned. Define, get together and share the findings on both teams. Okay, so they share, oh, we learned this, we learned that, systemizing group learnings, check if there are several groups of users. Like it, it may be hard because like if we have just two two users to prepare uh, two users prepared in advance, there may be just one group or two groups. So this is questionable. But see how what you can do. Um, so if there are several problems, do it again. But um, you know, like try to understand if the the initial assumption was proven or not. Uh, it was a good example from that service jam, which where we, we were with Vina, like our team identified this yes, no, yes, no, maybe as during the lifetime when we need to make uh, life changing uh, decisions, uh, we are usually like lagging or postponing these life changing decisions. We ran the series of interviews, seven interviews on the streets. We interviewed multiple people from 17 to 70. And we discovered that there is no problem at all. Like when I'm in the life changing situation, I'm making the decision like this. The problem for me is to identify that I'm in a life changing situation. Sometimes it takes years. But when we need to make a decision, we're super quick. And the, the, so we were uh, talking to one girl and she was like, um, we were asking her, like, do you ever have uh, the, the life changing decision? Never ever had a need to make a life-changing decision and she said no no life-changing decision no and who you are i'm uh, for example jane where are you from i'm from us and what are you doing here oh we're considering to move to lisbon life-changing decision <laughs> so that was the the the, the thing uh, yeah so vote for the things which the problems which you identified after the problem is identified, make sure that the team is aligned. It's very important that the whole team is aligned. Always keep this uh, as well as the important thing, because if there is no alignment, you lost them completely. Based on collected data, do the jobs to be done. If you don't know what is jobs to be done, ask me, I'll send you two amazing links, which will explain you what is this, and you will start using it from like immediately. But the whole thing is the following. When I'm in initial condition, I want to push my motivation so I can desire outcome. Like, uh, Nora, do you remember what was the, uh, when I'm looking for online uh, work, I want to, we, we did this recently. It's a shame that I don't remember it for, for um, by heart. Uh, whatever. So, uh, when jobs to be done identified, optional, but really good to have functional job aspects and emotional, both personal and social. Actually, I really encourage you to look into the jobs to be done because it will help you at the very, very beginning. If you remember that scary map with the relatives in the org chart. So the, the, you should look at the personal dimension and social dimension. This is where the tricks are hidden. This is where you can find the levers which will help you to push some decisions which you need and squeeze the service design in your uh, organization. This is one of the examples which we've done at Unbubble and Bubble is the uh, translation as a service platform. So we've done series of interviews and we come up with this. Uh, when I need to expand support in new markets and I don't have a multilingual team, I want to be able to support my clients without too much extra effort from my side so I can continue to do my everyday jobs without interruptions and then we had different things. Define competitors during the interview. Try to define competitors. Yes, so again, at one of the interviews, and this is quite common in, in um, our current business, that competition for the online jobs is Netflix and YouTube, because this is where people are spending time. You want them, you want to pay them for their time, but they don't want the money, they want entertainment. 
Uh, competitors also, there's an example. I'll share all of this, so you don't need to write it down. An expected outcome is the jobs to be done with the functional, social, and emotional. You may face the following situation. If at this stage you identify that you select the wrong problem, don't panic. Share it and let's discuss the options. So share it with, with, with you and discuss the options with your team. But in real life, stop immediately. So if, if this is the real life thing, if it's not the jam, if you're working on the product and you identify that you selected the wrong problem, don't spend your time further. Go back. Yeah, and this is the cost of change. Good. Sorry, it seems like my computer is lagging. It's too much information for my computer already, but I'm already closing. So how might we start with the jobs to be done statement, break it um, into small actionable meaningful questions and like five to 10, how might we questions? So how might we solve this problem? Again, I, I, I'm not going to, to stop at this methodology. I hope you know it. If you don't, please do it. It's a super powerful thing, especially how else might we? This is when the creativity is, is boosted for sure. So very powerful thing. The expected outcome, in what ways might we? What is stopping us from? You should also look at this because the, the showstoppers may be an interesting thing for you to consider. Then you have a lunch break where you're like, oh, and then people are starting to approach you and hey, what about this? What about that? And after lunch, when everyone is happy and calm down, you start the ideation session. So this is the session when you can finally explain them. Look, this is the session when 95% of the startups are starting, skipping the whole first part because they start with the great idea <laughs> and they start coding. But it's not even coding. It's just like, let's start the, the great idea. Uh, quantity over quality, generate as much ideas as possible. Be critical. So there is a brainstorm methodology. Uh, there were a couple of research that were showing that it's not efficient, uh, that it's not effective, efficient. Um, do the critical thinking. Okay, so idea and then break it if it doesn't work or fight to prove that it's work. It's much more efficient and, and, and really boosting the creativity inside of the team. Uh, group ideas, start stress testing by criticizing, do voting to post per, two points per person. If competition between ideas will be hot, discuss all of them and try to stress test them. Again, you need to come up with the single idea. There will be no time for, for several months. But keep all the notes because this will be super helpful for you to look back, not tomorrow, a few days later, to look back at what was thrown and what was discussed. Expected outcome, free form text will at least understand all of the solution. Prototyping and storytelling. Before this, explain them what is the prototype because it's very important. You can do it in different ways. Uh, what I suggest is the theater. Yeah, so when one person is playing the role of the system, another person is playing the customer and so on because this is the easiest way you can do it remotely. Uh, again, split the team into two sub team, one covering business topics, business model canvas, another is working on prototype and the presentation. Usually designers are going into the second group, business people are going into the first group. You can mix them actually. And that's funny thing <laughs> when, when you start asking designers to, to work on the business topics, that's funny. One of the things which I want to share about the service design, as the service designer, you need to know a couple of things. You need to know business, how the business is working. You need to know finance for sure. And you need to know engineering. If you don't know it, it will be hard for you to be a, a, a good service designer because you need to be able to speak with multiple different people on the same language and you need to understand what they're, they're telling you and the value when you're speaking the same language with them. So the business model canvas, we all know it, we've seen it. This is the way you can approach it. So start, so the numbers will guide you, uh, which you should pick first. So start with what are we building, who are we building for, yeah? and then so on. Try to cover them all because this is where you will see where you're failing. And you can show it, hey, oh, shit, we don't have uh, the cost structure is like the cost is too high. Mm, probably we need to go back. Expected outcome problem statement and short solution description. And finally, the team is ready for the presentation. So each team should present their problem and solution to the whole company, to the whole 
jam, I would say. The team is given three minutes for the presentation, two minutes for Q&A. After all, the team will complete their presentation, both jury and the rest, whatever, the voting. And the winning solution will be identified by the highest votes collected. Expected outcome, presentation. It's not mine, sorry, but whew, I'm done. So let me, let me find my Zoom. I don't know where is my Zoom, I'll stop sharing, okay, here it is. Thank you so much, Nikita. Awesome. <laughs> I, I took Thank too you. much time, I think, and I promised not to go into details. So we skipped several sessions. <laughs> no worries. Um, the presentation, we're also we're all going to put it um, on a moral board. We're just going to copy the link there. Um, and um, I also already wrote it in the chat. Um, if you want to connect, you can just copy the info to your LinkedIn profile, Twitter, whatever you want to share. You can just also put it on the moral board. And yeah, um, well, we went a little bit over time, but if there's, if, Nikita, if you still have a minute, if there are any questions, sure. let us know. It was too much information, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so don't do this mistake with your, when you are trying to share the value of the service design and service, <laughs> the user, user centered design. So I have a question. Um, uh, usually when, when I've uh, both participated in hosting uh, these remote um, workshops, uh, they've, or jams, they've, you get all the information at the same day. What's the logic behind giving the team all the information or like giving them some information the day before? Uh, they start to think and they lose this the, the great so the creativity is usually lower because um, when you stress them by the time you stress them to focus on really important things uh, one of the prototyping methodologies which i actually learned at that uh, productized yeah one of the productized events so they're giving you that you're preparing the card of the size of the mobile phone screen and you have, I think, one minute, no, 10 seconds per screen. And then you need to start drawing. Okay, so this is the sub screen. This is the next screen. This is the next screen. This is the next screen. And then you have like one minute to describe the, the application. It's amazing technique because you focus on really what matters and what is important. Uh, otherwise, you just like, oh, yeah, well, I draw this nice thing here. And, I, I, and, and probably we need this button. Yes, we need this button. But when you stress people with the time, they really focus on essential thing and they, they want to solve the problem as, as quick as possible. So this is why we're giving them the things that they, at the day. More questions? No, I just killed, I just killed the whole meetup. <laughs> well, you answered, answered all of the questions. <laughs> I have one further question. Um, what is your experience? How this uh, voting and rating at the end is influencing everything? Is it a motivating a factor or frustrating for the people that are not uh, um, so not winning? Or I don't know. It's unexpected, I would say. From all the votings I've seen, mm -hmm. the results are always like, I was, yeah, this team will win the competition for sure. No, you can't even imagine what will be the result. So it's really cool. Um, that's, yeah, that's, that's something that like, wow, yeah, but why? And then you have a discussion and then they start to, uh, the, like the, the ideas can start colliding. But this is the moment when, when you start, when they start feeling the value because they start argue with the things. Yeah, but on our interview, the person shared this or during our research, we discovered that. So this is more a uh, fight of arguments instead of fight of emotions. Mm -hmm. okay. One of the things which I want to share with you, I haven't mentioned that I probably I forgot to, to include it into the presentation. There is a thing which is Lean Service Creation Framework from Futurise. Yes, so I'm sharing it in the chat. Uh, in order to get this framework, it's free. 
it's a PDF with the posters. You can uh, print them. They, they can be big, or you can use the um, the tablet on, or the computer, and you can fill them. Uh, the whole framework is helping uh, to drive those kind of things um, really in a more structured, not in a more structured way, but in a, in a structured way. So I've learned it several years ago. It was a workshop in Lisbon for tourists who was coming and they were introduced. So we were having a day long workshop. It was not a service jam, but it was very similar to it. And within one day, several teams we were working on the problems of the portuguese post office and we were thinking of how we can uh, create some innovative ideas so like what what innovative solutions for them uh, i found that framework very useful and since then i'm using it to validate my own ideas if i need to validate something i'm always trying to use that thing and like in half a day having a really good understanding whether you need to invest your time and efforts further or not. And this is really good uh, for the team exercise. Um, the framework is very simple. Everything is explained. Uh, the, the, the posters are helping you to shape the whole thing. And within a very little effort, effort you can get a really good understanding of, again, whether to invest into the uh, service or not. Awesome, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Nikita, what is the best way for you to, to share the presentation? Can you copy? Oh, I can, uh, can I drop it here? Yeah, and I can also then copy it on the more board so you can check it again. Okay, let me try if I can do it like that. Yes. I can. Oh, magic. So the first one is the the second one, and the second one is the first one. So yeah, thank you very much from, from my side, from our side. Um, thank you for attending um, and uh, learning more about service design, service design jams. It was uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of fun, <laughs> at least I, I've learned a lot. Um, and yeah, I hope that you could also take something away from the session. Um, Michael, do you have anything else? Yeah, same from my side. Thank you very much. Th th thank you so much, Nikita. It was super interesting. Um, it was uh, very condensed, and I think that was also um, very good. It was uh, just super interesting to follow. Um, and uh, yeah, I could have uh, it, it could have been going on for another uh, hour probably. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> enough. <laughs> The next session is already the gym. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. Uh, that's that's uh, that's a very good idea. That's a brilliant idea. <laughs> so Blend thanks again also from my side. Hope everybody enjoyed it. I'm pretty sure. And yes. I'm looking forward to some of the other meetups sometime soon. <laughs>